Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. We got puddles in the driveway. Everything is going to get all muddy now, and we're always going to have to power wash it, and it's just going to take all kinds of time. Ah, oh, the frustrations. Stinking storm. Today we're starting a new chapter of products on my 1917 farmhouse. We're gonna be building a wraparound porch. Last year we finally had enough of looking at the original siding on this 103 year old house and we decided to spend a lot of money inside it. But unfortunately, due to time constraints, we were only able to get half the house sided. So then fast forward to this year, we were gonna finish siding the house, but I was like, you know what? Why we have the old siding off, it'd be a pretty good time to build a porch. Lucky for us, we have a neighbor just down the road who is an incredible carpenter, so he's gonna help us build this thing. So take a good hard look at this, because very soon it's gonna look a lot different. <sighs> It smells good. We are back from vacation. We just got back a little bit ago. Oh, it feels nice to be home. Are you sleeping? Yeah. Ooh, and look at this. We have more wood. Yeah, that looks like some pretty good stuff. I was just seeing what they brought. I like it. First things first, we need to tear out the old concrete pillars on the front of the house. Got half of it. Had a lot of people say that this one was leaning. I don't know, looks okay to me. Can't say by four. Here we go, boys. Let's push her over. Push her over. Back up, Cole. Timber! We just got back from vacation. Come up the driveway. They're putting this to work already. What are you doing, Justin? Well, I'm trying to get this string square with the house so I can figure out my post location. It's kind of cool how Justin's doing this. He built these sawhorse looking things. Two of them right here on the corner of the house. One down there and then one over there. I guess the more official term for them is a batter board. It's square to the house, but we don't know if it's square. So we'll find out how square your house is. I wasn't the best in first grade, but this looks more rectangular to me. Whatever. Let's go down here, Austin, get this board on. So what Justin did is he took a string from this batter board to the batter board on the other end, and then he pulled it tight, and then he'd walk along the house and he'd measure from the string to the wall to make sure that he was at the same distance all the way across the house. This measuring process takes a little while because this side of the house might be eight feet, and this side of the house might be eight feet and three eighths. So once Justin knew his measurement, he'd come back over to the batter board and then he'd move this nail over a little bit to adjust the string and then go back and measure it again and repeat the process until both sides were equal. We have good news. The house is not a rectangle. It is, a matter of fact, square. I did just three, four, five. It's just a formula to figure out going one way and going the other way and then measuring back to figure out your squareness. It's geometry. So I was never strong at that in school. I just know from years of doing it. And the reason I put these batter boards up is so I can get far enough away so you can drill your holes and then we'll take these down, set all the posts, and then we'll put them back. I will do my best to explain this construction stuff. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand. Justin's the smart one here. I just do what he tells me. Usually it's just beating stuff with a hammer. Now that we have our string lines set, this corner right here will actually be the outside of the pole that's gonna be drilled into the ground. And these poles are gonna be used to support the awning. So really what the string line's doing is giving us a reference point. Justin started by measuring in the corner and then every eight feet he's sticking a flag into the ground. And those flags are gonna represent where we're going to put a pole into the ground. Now unfortunately for us, it's not as easy as simply measuring eight feet the entire way across because we have to keep the aesthetics of the house in mind too. Take this window, for example. We want to have stairs running off the front of it, so we don't want to have a pole running in the middle of that. That would look kind of silly. While we were on vacation, Justin built these temporary pillars for the awning on the front deck, so that way it doesn't fall down. These are just temporary. Got some heavy concentration going, Austin. Hit it down in there and don't hit my hand. I'm gonna let those guys do their own thing. And I'm gonna get started cleaning out this old utility box, and then it's gonna get the torch treatment. That's smoky. Just using a torch to cut this right down the middle this way. This whole half minus the reel should easily fit in the dump truck. Oh, hi. <laughs> Look how casually he's sitting there doing this. It's so funny. He looks very focused. Now we just have a mess to clean up. There's a lot of stuff on the to-do list today, but first things first, I need to back stuff out of the big machine shed because we have people coming to pick up their chemical containers. And by chemical containers, I mean these things. Hello there, young man. That 
one might have a few dollars worth of chemicals in it. I'm a bird! Whee! Think you'll look better on camera or in real life? Oh, probably camera. He's right. I'm the same way. <laughs> Whenever these guys come down to our farm to get stuff, they actually argue who is going to go down there because nobody ever wants to come down here. We just make it miserable for them. As you notice, we yell out on them a lot. They yell at us a lot. It works really well. Now nah, we always have a lot of fun. We got great people we work with. Guaranteed to stay on until it falls off. That's right. Where are you going, Cole? No! He's driving in Cooper's hayfield. Oh, that's a no-no. I'm going to run over, get our other truck, try to unhook the trailer from it quick. They're talking maybe some storms this afternoon we're locking down the hatches in case the wind picks up it is storming oh just lost our first branch it looks like there's gonna be a tornado i really appreciate the rain that we're getting but we don't need this wind the wind is blowing so hard it's blowing through the door onto the floor and then stripping down into the basement got my lunch though i didn't warm mine up in time i've never been in a storm like this before ever in my life is this how bad it gets out here this is kind of scary holy cow it's like niagara falls in here holy tamales that is an incredible amount of wind. In case anyone isn't familiar with being Iowan, the traditional thing to do during a storm is to go out on your front porch with the lawn chair and watch the storm. I would not recommend that during this one. We're just gonna play it safe and hang out in the basement. There's a lot of windows upstairs and let's say a bucket or some other piece of debris blew through a window. We'd instantly have a lot of wind in the house and that's typically how houses go down. A window breaks or a door goes in then the wind rushes in and that's what pushes it over. Crap, look at the radar. Red is the worst. Oh man, it is a bigger Niagara Falls in here. The bummer thing is our corn has grown to full height and full height corn and wind typically don't mix. I don't know what kind of damage could be going on. It's possible we didn't get any. If I had to guess, I'd say we have some. That's part of farming though. We cannot control the weather. Talking high winds, one thing we want to make sure we save is the grill. Cooper's a little trailer that he just got. We probably better put it away. Bulls, I shouldn't be dorking around. I just talked to Cooper. He's in an area where the wind's blowing pretty good and there's actually trees on some houses. Nobody, nobody wants anything like that. I don't know if you can see, she's coming. Hey buddy, you coming out to check out the weather? What do you think? You gonna be the little weather cat? It's a storm coming and you still want your belly rubbed. All right, weather's changing, we'll move along. I guess we might as well open the door a little bit here and show you what it looks like outside in the storm. Can you hear that wind? It's a helpless feeling, that's for sure. I don't know if you can see it here, but the storm is starting to, oh crap, the wind is picking up bad. She's picking up real bad, guys. Oh man, you can look at my tree out here. She is leaning. I'm not gonna dork around. I think I'm gonna head to the basement. Ah, uh, yeah. Time to head to the basement, guys. Looks like the storm is letting up a little bit. I can't tell on crops right now. Well, guys, we have some very bad, very expensive news. Had a lot of water dripping down through the ceilings and the upstairs, which is running down to the next floor, which was running down into the next floor, which was running down into the basement. Figured, hey, Maybe there's water getting in the attic. I was right. There's no window there. Part of that window's gone. At least the birds are out. At least the corn doesn't look like it's been leveled. It's definitely been blown over a little bit, but the grove does look pretty tattered. Oh yeah, look at that yummy ceiling water. So much for getting the grove stuff done today. The rain's pretty much lightened up. We're gonna go outside and assess some damage. We're gonna drive around to some neighbor's houses, make sure everyone's okay. We're also gonna go check out Summer's house. You guys can see my window. Hey, the porch is still standing though. Justin must have done a pretty good job on building Building these temporary supports because they held. Looks like we had some Tyvek get ripped off. Oh no! Our shade tree that we eat lunch under. That's our favorite tree. That wind had some power because I had these windows laying on the ground flat over here. I don't even know where the other one's at. Doesn't look like there's any damage to the siding of the house. Picnic table got tipped over. Oh no. Something look funny to you guys? Looks like we lost our 50,000 bushel bin. Well, that's not very convenient. Let's see where the roof ended up. This bin looks okay. The leg looks okay. The big machine shed does not look okay. Ooh, there is no roof on that bin anymore. We can silicone up all the cracks and we can make a big swimming pool. That just don't quite look right. Fun fact, a new one of these bins runs about $100,000. All right, let's go look at the big machine shed. I know for a fact that the roof on that is destroyed. The most rickety building on the property is fine. 32,000 bushel bin looks to be unscathed it's good news there there's our bed roof <laughs> oh man we're gonna get in the truck and drive around whoa these doors are actually banana now just look how it's crinkled i hope i can get them open 
Wow, there's a lot of light in this bin. How's it looking in the neighborhood, Justin? Not so good. Not so good. Everything's pretty much destroyed. Corn looks pretty tattered up over here. Oh, we lost a building. That did not look good. Hey, Cole. Isn't that supposed to be on a roof? That barn's blown over too. Just by what I've seen in these past couple minutes, I would say we probably had over a half a million dollars worth of damage from this one storm. I wish I could help, but I think I have about $5 in my account. By the sounds of it, the weather station said we got winds that were over 92 miles an hour. There's tabletop, quite literally looking like a tabletop. Cool, looks a little stressed out. No, I just wanted to get my grove cleaned up. <laughs> Let's just put it on hold for another three weeks, and then we're gonna be setting up for harvest after that and then we're gonna be harvesting so I'm probably not gonna get any more cleanup done on the farm this year so I'm just kind of bummed about that the barn's gone are you sure it wasn't like that go 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 use your muscles go does more damage in the wind look at him go this neighbor's barn is gone I'm gonna look at a landlord's house now looks like a bin's destroyed and his machine shed's destroyed we got another machine shed up there destroyed oh no it's destroyed yep that door shouldn't be like that the co-op is just uh, unbelievably destroyed holy smokes uh, okay. what in the Bye. world what are you thinking Cole? a lot of damage so this was a five million bushel grain storage facility not anymore there were six bins here that held 750,000 bushels apiece the wind had so much power it actually ripped out the anchors that held it to the concrete look at these chunks neva how can you be eating at a time like this I bet one of these bins costs well over a million dollars. So believe it or not, when a grain bin is just an empty structure, it's actually incredibly weak from outside crushing forces, kind of like a pop can is once it's empty. But when a pop can's full, it's hard to crush. I would guess that bin has grain in it because that one is unscathed and the rest of these are toast. That guy doesn't seem like he's very happy. Wonder why? I haven't made it to any of our corn yet. Looking at some of the neighbor's corn. I don't even know if I want to go look at ours. All right, Cole, you getting out? We're not doing that because there's a whole other pile of trees on the other end. Kind of a sick feeling when you do all this work. How wind can mess things up really, really quick. It's not our first rodeo and I'm sure it won't be our last. Got a new skylight, Dad. I think the 340's okay. The harvest coming around the corner and just puts a big damper and everything. Ugh, there's the bin rough. Just to kind of put some of this damage into perspective, for you. We lost about 170,000 bushels worth of storage from this storm. We figure we make about 43 cents a bushel by being able to store our own grain instead of taking it to a co-op. So after some quick mental math, that costs us about $73,000 just on opportunity cost from not being able to store our own grain. And that's not including rebuilding any of this stuff or any of the damage to our crops. You know, some of this corn is really starting to look good too. See, a lot of this corn is just really tattered up. The leaves pretty much got shredded. Some of it's been over pretty good and some of it snapped off. That bin roof is gone. And all the trees down. Oh, it smokes. Their leg snapped off. There's a groundhog. Yeah, that leg system is down. This is Summer's house. She's got quite a few branches down. Basically, every tree in your yard has something missing from it. I'm on vacation right now. I took a week off of work. And what do I get to do? Pick up sticks. That's depressing. Good form, Dad. Good form. We ran out to Summer's to help her get her generator started. Turns out her generator wasn't there yet, so we helped her pick up sticks while it was on the way. It arrived. It had no gas or oil, so we had to run down to the main heated shop to get gas and oil. And while we were here, we figured we might as well get dad's generator going. We're definitely not gonna have a shortage of things to do this week. At mom and dad's, we had minimal damage. This tree got the top ripped off and that tree got ripped in half. They were both looking pretty sad before the storm, so it's not really a huge loss. I'm just glad that this spring, we got all the trees along the creek gone because I can only imagine what that would look like if they were standing. All right, dad, takes a jerk to start it. According to the rain gauge, we got just over half an inch, but that rain was coming in sideways, so I would guess we got more. All in all, today was definitely not the most fun day we've ever had on the farm, but hey, everybody's alive, everybody was safe, nobody was hurt. We can always replace this stuff, but we can't replace us. So I'm just glad everybody was safe. It sounds like nobody in the neighborhood was hurt. Driving around, pretty much everyone had exactly what we had, a little bit of house damage, a little bit of tree damage, bend damage, building damage. And by the sounds of it, this storm was huge. Like it covered the whole state of Iowa and it went into Illinois and even Michigan. I'm really not worried about any of this stuff because I know God will provide as long as we keep being faithful. We definitely 
definitely have our work cut out for us, but better things are going to result from these damages. We have two options. We can either sit here and pout about it, cry about it, stomp our feet. It's not going to change anything. Or we can just accept it for what it is and get everything fixed up and better than it was before. Just be ready for a lot of cleanup videos and a lot of project videos because we have a lot of cleaning up to do and we have a lot of rebuilding to do and we have a lot of construction projects that we are already in the midst of. Remember guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.